Welcome back to Tingat Pacifica. As the school holidays come to an end, spare a thought for school leavers who are making those all-important life decisions about what to do next year. Now, many would have already made plans, some weighing up parent expectations and their own goals. As Bryony Gray reports, it's important to make the right decision. Decisions, decisions. I want to go to university, but I'm unsure of what I want to study. I don't really know yet. I haven't decided, but I would like to be a teacher, just like my mum. I'm going to study a Bachelor of Health Science to get into medicine. Choosing what and where to study after leaving school is often a big concern. Your decision now can determine the next three to four years of your life. So how can you ensure you're making the right choice? Any challenges that you had in terms of deciding what you're wanting to do? Um, at the moment, I still don't know what I want to do in terms of career pathways. Blake Wong Ling from Careers NZ has returned to his old college to help support these students decide what to do with their lives. He says parents often have a big say. For us it's about helping parents understand that if a young person does invest some time sacrificing time to study at tertiary or whatever level, they can succeed and actually make more money and actually be more of an asset to their families. While the traditional university experience may be right for some, it's not the right fit for everyone. Wong Ling says our education system only prepares 30% of students for university, which means the bulk of school leavers need to look elsewhere, and their decisions need to be supported. I guess traditionally our Pacifica parents normally see that university qualification or university is the only measure of success, but we're seeing more these days that there's actually, you can get a degree at a polytechnic, you could get a degree at a private training establishment. So for us it's about understanding that there's a whole lot of different pathways. One of those who's made it into university is first-year student Kathy Ongonga. She's currently studying a Bachelor of Communications. She is the first in her family to attend university and vows she won't be the last. But it wasn't always this way. This time last year, Kathy never dreamed she'd be standing here today. I have a really big family. There's 14 people living inside my house. I'm the eldest child, so the expectations for me were really high. Initially, I wanted to into, into the workforce straight away because just seeing the financial struggle, I just wanted to help my parents out. But they thought that it would be better if I went to uni, got a degree so I could get a better quality job. But Kati's first time at university didn't quite go to plan. She spent a whole semester studying psychology before she realised it wasn't for her. Making the decision to study communications was a bit of a difficult one because they wanted me to pursue psychology because they thought it would give me you know, a better job and stuff like that. But um, I wanted to pursue communications. It's a passion, I really enjoy doing it. Like I want to wake up in the morning and be like, yes, like I've got work. And sometimes you just have to be a bit selfish and do what you want. So despite changing her mind, Kathy was able to continue her studies with little disruption. It's a life lesson she's keen to pass on. Even if your parents or family don't agree with it, like, be so passionate about it that they can't ignore it. There's no dream too big, no dream too small, so just be passionate and pursue your passion. Advice Blake Wong Ling certainly endorses. And so it's all about understanding identity, understanding someone's skills, talents, natural abilities that they know now, but also other abilities that they can develop. Then it's moving on to thinking about opportunity awareness. So I've got strengths here, I've got interests and dreams here, so where are the opportunities for me to get there to succeed? Well, joining me today for our talanoa is the Head of Pacific Advancement at AUT, Walter Fraser Nisayandra, and welcome to Tangata Pacifica. Well, these are really hard decisions to make while you're still young. What's your advice to school leavers? I think at the end of the day, it really comes down to knowing the credits that you have um, and really sitting down with, you know, teachers. And most schools will have career advisors and, and year 13 deans that students can actually sit down with and have that honest conversation about where they're heading. Okay. Because most schools will by now know, have a good idea on, on the kinds of results that their students will attain by the end of the year. What do we need to do to ensure that our kids are making the best decisions for themselves? I think it, it comes down to understanding those credits and being able to work out which courses and programs or study that they can apply, okay. uh, apply for, um, understanding that. Um, but the other important thing is to make sure that they also have more than one option. And more often than not, universities find that um, most, many Pacific students only apply for one program of study. Okay. And the, I think the, the best thing for them to do is to apply for multiple programs of study in the university and also multiple programs of study 
study across multiple universities okay. so that they always have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C and a plan D. What about the plan parents? <laughs> I know my dad, he was really shocked I wasn't going to be an accountant. How open are parents to supporting their kids' pathway? Well, that's always a difficult question, but the most important thing, I think, is to make sure that you engage parents right at the outset. And, and there's lots of people who are there to help students engage their parents. And I know for Pacific students, it's quite difficult to try and get your parents engaged mm -hmm. in those conversations. And I know there's lots of services and support services available. And start with the school. Um, most schools will have career counselors and year 13 deans, etc., that are very keen to engage the parents. Um, and I think that's the most important part to start and engage the parents right at the outset. And how early? Is it year nine? Is it well, even earlier? Do you start talking? Well, I mean, I think year nine and ten is, 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 is getting there, but I think as they, as they get to year 13 and begin to make those decisions, it's getting, to, getting parents engaged right at the outset. Okay, we saw in the item a, a young woman who'd started a, a course that she wasn't so passionate mm -hmm. about. What's your advice to students? Well, my advice to students, as, as, as a bit in that story, is that it's never too late to change, um, but obviously trying to prevent that happening in the first place is probably is, 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 is the thing to do. And, and to do that, I think students who are currently in year 13 need to spend their summer, some time in their summer, really finding out about those courses that they, they plan to study. Most universities will have people available to give them lots of information around the kinds of assessment that might be required, etc. And you really invest in that time in finding out. OK, well, it's a good time to start looking ahead to that. Thank you so much, Vina Kavakalevo, for coming in this morning. You're welcome. Thank you, Walter.